Has anyone read the book by Daniel Pink, Drive? He's got a number of books out. This one's really interesting because it talks about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. These are the three things that people really want, all human beings want. So I'm not gonna talk about the last two, mastery and purpose, except to say mastery could be the electrician that has become a master electrician, or a master carpenter, pipe fitter, heavy duty mechanic, dispatch person, someone who's really good at their job. But we all want control of our own destiny. We want to, to not necessarily be bossed around and told what to do every single moment of our lives. Rules are fine, parameters are good, but people want autonomy. They want to be self-directed. And that's where self-awareness comes into play. But analyze it thinking, are there pebbles in the path on the way down? Are the wheels gonna get caught up and cause me to tumble? When I get down to the bottom, is, there, is that gate, is there an opening there that I can go through? Once I get out onto the boardwalk, are there slats and holes between the boards to trip me up or am I gonna sail right out there? Some people think it through, others don't. It's just get on and go and never mind what the consequences are. So how did you score on this one? Anyone score above 15? Yeah. I wonder if more hands actually went up since I said it's okay for managers to score <laughs> high risk on this one. So uh, how many people have the opposite reaction? They're thinking, cool. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Okay. <laughs> what? Wow. Okay, I've, I, I've, I've done this a lot. I've never heard that one. That's great. So here's the resistant kid. Imagine this. There's a new rule in place and you must now inspect everyone's uniform at the start of every shift to make sure their attire is up to standard. What's the wrong thing to say to that person who is highly rule resistant? Just shout it out. What's the wrong thing to say if you're the boss? Why can't you get it right? Why can't you get it right? You will do it. You will do it. We've been doing this for, you know, well, particular. Um, human error and how it relates to your world with facilities management. Um, we're going to do something kind of fun. We're going to actually do a very informal, quick personality risk assessment. I'm going to throw a few questions up. The real assessment takes about 15 to 20 minutes to do. We don't have time for that, of course. Um, did anyone actually do one ahead of time? But, oh, I see one hand go up. Okay, excellent, good. So uh, you'll be able to get a, a really quick snapshot of your own personality risk traits as we go through this. Where it will take place, yeah. predict how it will happen, and now I want you to think about who will cause it. Okay, you can open your eyes. Why do certain people come to mind for some of you? Usually when I do this, about half the room puts up their hand. How many people were actually picturing faces and, and real people in one of your facilities. Again, it's about half the room. And why is that? It is because people actually do act in very predictable ways according to how we're hardwired, according to our default personality settings. So I just want to leave you with this. Charlie Moorcraft became a very bitter person, spent a couple of years in pain, wandering around the US. He ended up in Yosemite National Park. If you've heard him speak, you've heard this story. And he was up on the mountain and he literally felt like committing suicide. And he thought things through and something came over him. Um, and he had an epiphany and he said, I, I have to stop being bitter and blaming the world. It was me who caused this accident. And I can use my story to tell people about what happened. I can use my story to affect positive change. And he, when he came back, he's now a speaker and he does wonderful things for organizations. But he said, when he spent time in the hospital, he heard so many burn victims and other accident patients say a couple of things about their accidents. Number one, it happened so fast. Number two, I never thought it would happen to me. And three, I wish I could go back and do things over. And what he said to us is, with, he loves what we're doing in this new field of safety self-awareness. He said, this is the do-over. This is getting in front of the problem and being proactive. Um, so positive is, is an interesting word. So when we go talk to someone, don't say, 
please come into my office or my trailer or wherever the workspace is. The, um, we need to talk about your behavior. When my wife says to me, we need to talk about your behavior, it's not good, right? I know I did something wrong. So instead, it has to come from that place of concern saying, you know, let's, let's just talk about ways that we can get to know you and help you be safer and make different choices. Open the mouth, the bass catch on the tastiest, most tender salmon. Which is exactly what we at John West want. So on that note, thank you very much for your time and attention.